Oh, gosh. Welcome to the LATimes.com on our Google Plus Hangout this afternoon. Today we're talking about the Space Shuttle Endeavor, which is going to make a flyby over Los Angeles, and then there'll be a two-day parade of sorts as it comes to its new home here at Los Angeles and the LA County Science Center. And we're going to talk about how to view this uh, the shuttle as it flies by, as well as the parade route and some controversy about it being moved through Los Angeles. And we're here to talk about this with our two reporters who've been covering the Endeavor's arrival in LA, Kate Mather and Angel Jennings. Thank you both for coming in. Thank you for having us. Okay, you've been covering this for a week. And Kate, let's start with you. I think a lot of people want to know when the when the shuttle is going to fly over LA, where it's going to fly over, and how they can see it and take photos of it. Right now, it went from Florida to Houston. Tell us about where it goes from Houston. Right. So tomorrow morning, it's going to depart Houston at about 7.15 in the morning is the time they're shooting for. It's going to refuel once, but then it's ultimately going to get to Edwards Air Force Base uh, sometime tomorrow. They're saying about noon right now. And it's going to sit at Edwards overnight. And then Friday morning, again at about 7.15, it's going to take off and it's going to do this giant aerial tour across California and then circle L.A. a couple of times before landing at the airport here. So it's just really going to be a great thing. Hour. What? So just in time for the morning rush hour. <laughs> right, right. It should, it should touch down a little after that, but it will be flying over the city. Uh, they anticipate it reaching Los Angeles airspace about 10.30 in the morning on Friday. And from there, it's going to tour a ton of landmarks across the city. It's expected to fly over the Getty Center, uh, the Queen Mary, Griffith Observatory, the California Science Center itself, Universal Studios and Disneyland. So really, it's, it's got a wide range of places it's going to tour here. Let me ask you this, Kate. This is not... This is literally a tour designed for people to see it because it's not like they're just flying it through a uh, the most close route, right? Right, right, and that's that's why when it it's it stays Thursday night in Edwards Air Force Base and on Friday when it takes off, that's why it's going up to Sacramento and San Francisco before it comes down here. The folks that organize this tour, uh, people from the Science Center, NASA, and the FAA, really want to give people a chance to see the shuttle uh, before it, it makes it to its permanent home. This is the last one to be moved in such a major way. Um, the other shuttles have already, you know, been to their permanent locations in New York, Washington, D.C., and uh, at, at Kennedy Space Center. And so this is really kind of the grand finale for the shuttles. And could you tell me where some of the landmarks the shuttle will fly over? Mm -hmm. So up north in Sacramento, it's expected to tour the Capitol building. Um, and then when it dips down to San Francisco, you know, they're making it a point to hit up all the major landmarks. They haven't said publicly where it will go in San Francisco, but they've advised some museums you can go to to watch there. Uh, but you can probably expect it's going to fly over the Golden Gate Bridge and some other significant city landmarks there. And then when it gets to L.A., I mean, the list, it's a long list. It's expected to fly uh, down the coast near Venice Beach and Huntington Beach. It's going to fly over JPL. Uh, you know, there's going to be landmarks here downtown, down in Orange County, again at Disneyland, the Queen Mary, the Long Beach Aquarium, Griffith Park Observatory. Really, there's a, a, a large list of places it's ex expected to fly over. Right. And I guess the they expect a lot of people to be out there um, looking for looking for the shuttle, taking photos of it, seeing it. Mm -hmm. Are there any tips they give about what the best way to do that are? Um, one of the things that they've said is is just kind of know the landmarks where they're going to be and think about where you might be. For instance, to see it fly over downtown, you'll probably want to be in a pretty tall spot down here, maybe the top of a parking garage or a tall building. Um, when you're down in Long Beach, Ocean Avenue will be a great place uh, to stand along and be able to see it as it goes over the Queen Mary and the aquarium down there. Um, right. The one thing is public safety officials are concerned that people are going to stop and park their cars along the side of the freeway or right. the city streets. So they're asking people to not do that and really, you know, get to places early and be prepared to, to sit and watch safely rather than, you know, while on the move. Right. And so I guess from there, um, the, the, the shuttle will stay overnight uh, over the weekend, but then there'll be the big move from essentially the Inglewood area to the Science Center near downtown. And mm -hmm. Angel, let's bring you in because this was an epic undertaking to basically clear the space for these um, for the shuttle to be moved. And there was some controversy of that involving trees. Can you kind of describe that, um, Angel? 
So the California Science Center contracted a landscaping company to chop down close to 400 trees along the 12-mile route from LAX to um, the Science Center, where the space shuttle will be in its new home at Expedition Park. Um, it'll go from go into Westchester, Inglewood, um, on Manchester Boulevard, then go up Crenshaw and along MLK. And before it gets to its final home in Expedition Park. And along that route, there's going to be 400, I said about 393 trees total, um, 119 of which will be in South LA. Hmm. And, and these are trees that are not just being trimmed, they're being chopped down. They're, yeah, they're being chopped down to stumps. And these are some, you know, they're magnolia, eucalyptus, and of course, you, you know, the destructive ficus trees that have been eroding the sidewalks. And some residents are kind of happy that those trees are going away and that they will be repairing the sidewalks. But a lot of residents were up in arms over losing some of the beautiful landscape that kind of make South LA, you know, a little bit more beautiful and homey. Yeah, and I guess the, the and officials are saying they really have no choice because the shuttle is just too large to move through without removing the trees as well as other things like street lamps, traffic signals, that kind of thing. Yeah, at fo it's at five stories tall and at 78 feet wide. It's just massive. Um, it's You can't compare it to the rock that went through Long Beach. Um, and so they're creating a special device to help maneuver it through the streets. So they're kind of pivoting and trying to save as many trees as possible, um, as well as in, in cases, you know, moving light posts and signs as opposed to possibly chopping trees, but it was just too large to do anything else with. They employed ideas, options such as helicopters, but it was too heavy. They thought about going in the freeway, but with such a large range, it was hard to maneuver on and off the ramps. Hmm, wow, and um, and I guess that while there are some people who are upset about the trees, there are also a lot of people who are very excited about this and um, really plan to be along that route to sort of, again, get their picture taken and just watch this huge um, machine move through town. Yeah, as I talked to residents, everyone was in support of the space shuttle coming through. They hate to see their trees go and to it kind of mess up their landscape, but they were all excited and they said they would be on along the parade lines and the routes cheering it on. They understand what this means for the city as well as the state and the West Coast because it's the only shuttle on the um, west of the Mississippi. So they, they're excited to play a part and be part of history, but at the same time, they want to make sure that their needs are also met as well. Okay. Okay, let's go back to you for a second and tell us about what is going to eventually happen with Endeavor once it gets to the uh, Science Center. Right. So the, the two-day trip from LAX to the California Science Center begins October 12th. So the shuttle should get there, they're guessing, sometime in the evening on October 13th. And from there, they've constructed a temporary hangar at the Science Center, and that's going to display the shuttle horizontally uh, for the next five years while they work to build a new third wing onto the museum. Um, this wing is going to be uh, devoted entirely to air and space, and they're excited about it because they get a chance to really build this wing around the space shuttle. And it's something they envisioned doing 20 years ago, and now they're actually making that dream come to fruition. So that permanent exhibit in which the shuttle will actually be displayed upright, and it'll be the only shuttle uh, of the four awarded to museums nationwide that will be displayed vertically, that should open in about five years, they're saying. So for now, people will be able to see it in this temporary exhibit, which opens to the public October 30th. So you should be able to see it pretty soon. And I guess uh, in terms of the caveats, uh, Kate, as you noted, one of them is uh, if you are see the space shuttle uh, going by while you're on the freeway or the road, not to pull over, not to sort of uh, in jeopardize anyone for that. Is there any other caveats they're giving in terms of uh, the flyover that people should know about? Um, I think the biggest thing is one of one of the things they really tried to do when creating the, the flyover route through Southern California was really spread it over an area where people will be able to see it. And so, you know, there are a lot of notable landmarks there, most of which are public, so all you have to do is, is get to those spots and look up and you'll get a pretty spectacular view. It's going to fly 1,500 feet at its height and so it's going to be really low to the ground 
and really going to be a remarkable sight to see. I assume there has to be some sort of air traffic control issues around that. Uh, right. Uh, LAX officials spoke at a news conference this morning and said they're not anticipating any major delays. Uh, they do have to shut down the south runway while this thing lands, and but it's going to be taxied over to a United Airlines hangar pretty quickly. So they're not anticipating anything major in terms of air traffic delays at the airport. And I guess I guess there's a certain amount of dependency on weather in terms of whether there might be any obstructions to seeing it. Right. Weather has is, is been a huge factor in all of this. The shuttle was originally supposed to leave Florida early Monday morning, but thunderstorms between Florida and Houston pushed that back to a departure of this morning. And I was told, you know, that as they were finalizing the flyover route, one of the, the biggest factors, not only in terms of uh, security concerns, but was weather. And, and there was a possibility that if there was bad weather up north or, or bad weather elsewhere along the route, that they would have to scrap the flyover tour to get the shuttle safely to LA. That's their major concern. And thankfully, here in Los Angeles, weather isn't necessarily one of our biggest concerns. So that flyover should, should occur as scheduled. OK, and let's, let's say the last question for you, Angel. Now, these trees are gone. There's some controversy about that. What's going to happen once the shuttle moves through? Are they going to be planting new trees? Yes, they are. Actually, um, in Westchester and South Del and Westchester and Inglewood, they'll be replanting twice as many trees as they remove. Um, but in South LA, um, a little patch of area in the council districts 8 and 10, they actually got, were able to broker a deal where they would get four trees replanted for every one removed. And they won't be along the major thoroughfares um, like Crenshaw and Manchester, but they'll be disseminated into the communities. So you'll see these unique um, kind of communities now with distinct characters with trees that are of different species going along each street. Okay, and I guess though, I guess the one caveat is that it'll take a while for them to grow to the height of the ones yes. they've lost. Um, but also part of the deal um, in South LA, um, they were able to get larger trees, trees that were more mature. Um, but yes, it still would take you know fifty, maybe even sixty, seventy years before they reach the height that we see them at now. Okay, well, Angel and Kate, thank you so much for coming and joining us today. And thank you, Shelby. We'll uh, Thank you for and, having us. Uh, stay with us. Yeah, we will have much coverage of the um, uh, Endeavor fly through on Friday, and uh, both Angel and uh, Kate and many, many others will be around. And so stay with us for that, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.